And good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Meta for more grand final actions. This time we're heading to the Victoria to see who will win between Other Newton and Yarrow Valley. I'm Chris. I'm being joined by Gex. And our wonderful sponsors today are... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Our wonderful sponsors are Torrance University, Optus, and MSI. And if you are into gaming and esports, make sure you... Or if you want to learn more about uh, Torrens' game design, game programming, 3D design, and animation, and graphics communication design courses, uh, well, you can just head on over to Torrens to find out more about that. So, Gex, uh, this is going to be a very interesting grand final here today. Uh, I'm very excited. Both teams showed plenty of promise during their regular season. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, uh, all of the Over Newton uh, boys really, really showed up, and uh, we had a number of matches showing off the prowess of the Yarra uh, Valley uh, grammar guys as well. So I, I do think this is going to be a very, very hard fought match. Uh, both of these guys have been pushing themselves every game. It hasn't been uh, a matter of sitting back even when they had a large upper hand. So uh, neither of these guys are likely to take each other um, lightly, I think, here. I think they're both going to come into this with a very serious mindset. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we've had, I'm pretty sure we've also seen this. Uh, these two teams have battled before in the regular season as well. If I remember correctly, Owen Nude mm -hmm. won that 2-1. to one. So, yeah, this should be a very, uh, very good... Uh, Best of seven series here. I think OACC should be able to take it out. However, I'll probably say it will do it in about six games. Three to R. Oh, sorry, four to two. Yep. As we head in, everybody's in ready for kickoff. It's definitely going to be uh, a quick uh, blood. I think early here. I think um, uh, at least one of these teams is going to need a bit of... Uh, a bit of time to warm up, especially being that it is morning matches. Uh, I don't think a lot of gamers are prepared for morning tournaments, so it's going to take a little while. Great save from Marky. He'll help uh, keep it away from Brando being the first one to open those floodgates, though. Yeah, it was a very good save there to keep the goals clean for the moment as the spuds now begin to move the ball. Oh. Try, or try to move the ball out of their own half here again. Being able to just get it past halfway in line. Well, in the background, just decides to play it safe and pick it back up in the corner. But this is just starting to open up now for ACC here. They're starting to really get that pressure going. And they're starting to get a few open opportunities here. Marky, though, misses the ball that time around. Will force. Arena to quickly fall back. He goes into a 50-50 and he's unable to save it well with the opener. Yeah, a bit of a disappointing circumstance here from Arena. Dip by all circumstance actually was in a fairly good position for Ghost Defense there, but Whale just uh, really used that mind game, took it up close to that post and let it uh, dribble itself in. So uh, a, a well taken first goal there. Yeah, that's a nice first goal for Yarra Valley to have as Brando sets it up for Whale again, but he takes it wide and some around. The pin follows through, but the fence holds for now. Marky with another save. Booming clear by Glavin to get the ball back into the midfield here. But Blavie G, they're starting to put the pressure on yet again here. Brando going oh so close to getting a jiggy touch there, but they just keep this pressure going. Brando just caught in a bit of a tricky spot. It's able to set it up for Whale, but he sends it wide. Once again, Lapine will have to go back to try and Pick up the ball, bit of a backwards pass there, but it works out well for Brando, who puts it on to the backboard. Oh, you see, see, they're starting to clear it out, but they just can't keep control past halfway line. Uh, that uh, little back pass there, I feel, I feel like that's a result of communication. Uh, a Ooh. great shot from Brando, just a little bit of a miss in defense there, opens up a shot for him, and he's up quick. Glavin. The one to miss the mark this time around, unfortunately. And it's going to be YVG ahead by two. Yeah, Yarra Valley taking the early lead here. As... Well, this... This is actually sort of... I'm a little bit surprised about normally Yarra Valley are the team that are normally a bit slow out of the gates. So, yeah, to see them actually lifting this early on, that's actually pretty darn good for them. So... As a whale will get a Saviour Valley. We'll look to try and hold on for the next three minutes to get the first game win. Lapine now just gets the ball past Marky. Glavin tries to contest, but we can 
Campbell can only get the ball over towards Arena. Lapine now picks up the ball on the wall, actually gets it past the defender as well in 50, but Arena picks up the ball. Brando now just lobs it into the corner. Glavin there waiting to clear out the ball. It will be a reset here, but Arrow Valley still maintain possession. Mark, he comes in with a steal. Lapine, nice save there to keep it out of the top corner. Now Lapine, he's just going to go back up here. Two touches to Brando. Sets up on the backboard again, but Whale is in the midfield there, decides not to go for the play. So, Arrow Valley once again just picking up possession here, looking to try and set something up, but eventually Hovenuden just clears it into that. The attacking third, can they do anything with it? Arena sets the wall up nicely, but it's cleared out under pressure. Arena is going to bring that back to center. A lot more pressure now uh, in the final half of this game from uh, the Overnewton boys here. ICC definitely lifting, unable to score a goal yet, but uh, the, they are looking like a different team to the opening um, minute or so. Uh, it's, it's going to be quite an effort for them to bring this one back with a minute 25 on clock now. They are only down by two, it's absolutely doable, and they have some confidence behind them at this point, but a few little misses like that one there could cost them this still, and they really, really need to get on top of this. They have had that slow start like you were talking about, and I do absolutely agree. I thought I was expecting them probably to be up above YVG uh, in the start of this series, and um, yeah, have just had that slow start, and they're going to have to crawl it back from this point. But that might be a good option Ooh. for them there. Glavin just not able to make it in time. Oh, and that just leads to a counter-attack rail with the conversion here. Look to the replay, and yeah, it was just a perfect counter. Arena just caught him between a rock and a hard place, and he just and he thinks the wall's going to go to Lapine. Well, just keeps it to himself, and that opens up the net. So, yeah, that will be 3-0 to Yarra Valley, and that should be game one in the bag for him as well. So, yeah, that's pretty strong stuff here for the... Yarra Valley goes to kick things off as with time beginning to tick oh. away here we will look for, for consolation they will get it from Glavin there as the ball just ping pongs around the uh, defences of Yarra Valley but still it's something for Avenue to carry into game two. I mean, you say that, but there is still barely enough time to do this. I mean, more than 10 seconds a goal. I've done this personally at this kind of level, and uh, it's not undoable. Uh, it's it's uh, actually, not only is this an evenable game, it's outright winnable before zero at this point, but every second that ticks down uh, reduces the, the chance of that quite dramatically. Glavin can't quite reach it. Arena's going to have to go fast, but he's third man and isn't willing to risk it. Arena now has the mechanics, has the speed, but Brando just edges it out and gets there first. We'll get the defensive touch and that will secure game one. Yeah, uh, such a crucial touch there from Brando to make sure that Yarra Valley wins that first game. Arena, if he did have the uh, that opening there, probably converts and might have just snuck for a kickoff goal to send it into OT, but... Yeah, Brando, some good defense all around from him to mm. pick up, to, or sorry, not pick up, to confirm the first game for Yarra Valley, 3 to one But yeah, it was a very strong start from that orange side, something we weren't really expecting, and well, if that's the case, and OACC, who were the first seed heading into those finals, well, they might need to start to lift a little bit. Yeah, and OACC have had a little bit of domination over this region. Uh, don't get me wrong, YVG have been fantastic, but this is probably an unexpected result, especially on the first game. Uh, like you said, we were expecting YVG to be the ones that needed that time to warm up. They've come in very, very strong now, and uh, uh, Whale in particular, so many stats filling that out. No assists, but it's the only stat uh, that wasn't on that board. Uh, three saves, three shots, and uh, I believe it was two goals coming out of Whale that uh, made that a huge, huge game for him. He was uh, filling all roles incredibly well and I think that's something that this team excels in, is just being able to flex. They they really all have the ability to play any position on the field. They're not locked to any one role and now Arena displaying that himself. Marky 
Gonna send that away and it's gonna go downfield and now it is time for OACC to really show what they've got if they want to come into this series even it up early here. Yeah, I mean, for OACC they have a lot going for them here. Their mechanics are pretty darn good. Their communication is near top notch. But at the moment, the one thing they're mainly lacking is possession. That last series, I would say they only had the ball for not more than maybe 90 seconds overall here as, yeah, they really need to lift up that possession and, well, that's what YVG are targeting early on oh. and that's working out well for him as, oh, that was, that was so close, but well, well positioned there for the save, the clear out will just alleviate some of the pressure for YVG, but OACC finally starting to get a bit of possession of the bonnets of their cars. And they're forcing out a bit of pressure as well. Brando into the blows here, but he's able to keep possession there. Drags into the midfield, gets it to Whale, but that's a very soft touch. Marky, an easy pick up there to get the move going for Glavin. Lapine already back in defense. Easy touch there for a save. A little bit of a tricky spot, though, as they were looking at down the barrel for a double commit. They don't do it, however, and Whale will eventually clear out the ball here, but with Irvin Newton starting to get a bit more pressure on to their defensive lines here, YVG, and they need to show how well they can play out in this continued defense. Arena and uh, Marky, they're showing exactly one of the reasons that YVG oh. has been on top so far. There's still shots coming out, but YVG really have their cool. Uh, they're, they're keeping their cool. There's a shot from Glaven, though, as the cool gets taken away by a demo there. But uh, YVG have been rotating so well, almost no double commits the entire match. Finally, OACC are able to shake them with that demo, open up that room, and uh, they're going to go up by one and take the first one in this series. And that just came from that continued pressure as well, as well. Look for an immediate response, won't be able to get it. But yeah, Ovenud, and even with those slow plays leading up to the goal, it just added pressure, it just kept forcing Arrow Valley into a bit of a tricky situation, and eventually they were able to just find the gap there, OACC. So. Yeah, eventually they break through to get their first goal of game two, and with that the lead, but now they need to try and hold off here from Yarra Valley as Lapine just gives the ball up to Galavin there, who carries it out. Well, though, finds the wall with the ball, and Lapine just going to try and reassert YVG dominance here. Marky with a little bit of a touch there just to deny him at the halfway line. And that's just going to continue to add that pressure on YBG here, who are not getting the game like they did in Game 1 where they had all the possession of ACC. They are starting to really lift in that department. Oh. Marky goes very close, but he'll be cruelly denied by the crossbar. A uh, big miss from uh, Arena, a little uncharacteristic for him there as well, actually. Uh, misreading that quite badly off the backboard, but... Uh, uh, they will get back control here. It's on their own side, though. They need to be able to clear out. Glavin, a good touch almost in. Marky will make a save. I have to apologize. I said that it was the first one in the series. I meant game earlier, but it is the first time they've been up in, the, uh, in a game so far, though. And uh, uh, that's a big uh, difference in how they're going to play this because now they uh, don't just need to push exclusively. They don't just need to make goals. They can um, at least somewhat sit back and defend on this uh, one goal lead. It's not where you want to sit. You need to get that second goal to push this out and uh, have more security. But it does give them a little bit of wiggle room. It definitely does. As we enter the final 50 seconds, our Brano just assassinates his teammate. Ooh, level. Wow, that is a very, very good bob. Just a shame that Lapine was looking at the wrong direction there. That would have been a pretty darn good goal as Brando goes oh so close on the uh, tight line. Will be cleared out. Lapine just trying to keep the ball locked in the attacking half. It's straddling the halfway line and well, we'll send one onto the backboard. Can't follow Ooh. through Arena with the bump away. And he has an open net, but he's got a whiff it wide. Might not make too much of a difference, but he might ruin it as well as Lapine brings it back in to the midfield marky with an attempt that's in and that's gonna be over newton all but securing game number two yeah with 12 seconds left uh really not much of a chance here it would need a kickoff goal immediately and uh and then another one to follow uh really not much of a likelihood here of any eventuality for yvg but 
They don't need to be too disappointed yet. They are still even in this series. They took an early um, win in the series so far, and it will go one to one here. Uh, so, you know, it, things can be definitely worse for them, but good control out of OACC. Uh, a lot more aggression and possession of that ball really will lead them to that victory, as narrow as it was until maybe those cl uh, closing seconds. Yeah, and well, for the series as well, I haven't even really needed that win as well because I would probably say if they went 2 0 down, YBG might have just been able to just continue to exert that pressure throughout the entire series. So mm. it's good for them that they got that win. And now they're back to an even footing here. Three, win three more wins, and well, whichever team gets that first will take out the series. So yeah, this is going to be. Important game three here to see who might dictate the uh, pressure for the next couple of games after this. And I think it's starting to open up a little here as well. Uh, the game in general definitely looking like it could go either way at any moment. I mean, despite the 2-0 oh. win there, it was only a one goal lead for the vast majority of that last match, really only uh, cleaning it up completely in that those last few seconds there. Whale now looking good on to bring this into control, but the wrong direction on field will mean that they are under fire again. Brando downfield arena is available and now Whale will have to continue that down looking for the read on Glavin, but Arena's gonna center again and already we're seeing that possession out of OACC again. Yeah, they're controlling the pressure, just like they did in game two here. Oh. That's going to be a nice opening. Just taken wide, however. Very good attempt on Marky with the follow through. We'll eventually see that play result in a goal. Early lead once again to AACC. Yeah, and uh, Marky's really been uh, leading a lot of these charges. Uh, has done extremely well and um, uh, topped the team for the last game as well. Arena's probably been the man throughout uh, the season that we've talked about the most in this team, but Marky is really, really showing up right now and showing that not only is he a key member of the team, he might even be the most important one for them this series. Yeah, definitely could be the case as Lapine looks for a long range attempt, but Arena will clear out the ball. Well, now that Ooh. is a perfect dunk down there. No hope of saving that one. Equalizer coming through from Whale. And speaking of uh, important men for the team, Whale again, uh, the man that really took them through in that first game, showing up massively topping the team with 150 points right now, two shots on goal and a, and a goal to his name and what a goal it was, spiked down so perfectly. Uh, Whale is definitely somebody that could be underestimated by OACC. We discussed the fact that OACC has a mechanical advantage. What a yeah. shot. A Whale has to be in. Lapine will be the one to take it though. As Oh, it was Lapine's shot actually, my bad. Yeah, Lapine's uh, shot. I was reading the names incorrectly and yeah, uh, Lavin. Just unable to get underneath it and nudges it into his own goal, unfortunately for him. Yeah, that, that was pretty much a catch-22 for him there. He couldn't really do too much of how no. the ball was bouncing off the crossbar. So, unfortunate for Glavin, but for the Yarra Valley fans, they'll be ecstatic. They regain the lead here and, well, OACC are back now under that pressure here that they were under in Game 1. But the difference is, they know how to win. They've got that already under their belt here, so probably going to be a little bit easier mentally for them to come back, but they just need to make sure that they can continue to control possession because they're still doing that in this third game here. They've just been a bit unlucky. Oh, no! Oh, that is horrible to see! What an own goal, and that's the equalizer there for OACC. Oh, no. Brando oh, did God. try and flip away from that as well, but, man, that placed right in front of him. There was very little he could do at that point, but devastating blow. And that kind of uh, goal can really affect a team mentally. So uh, particularly Brando, he's going to have to um, try and lift through this and uh, make sure that his mental state, what a shot from Arena has to be finished, but Whale will clear it out. An unbelievable missed opportunity there. The Arena set that up so perfectly. Nobody available to finish it off, but I just can't believe that Arena managed to get a touch that flat for it to bounce on goal line like that. 
Oh, talk about a hectic minute there as Arena once again just finds the woodwork. He just can't find the net. Poor man, but a uh, halfway point of this second, or this third game, sorry. Both teams having scored two goals, one of them both from owns, but by oh, gee, both teams are really throwing everything at it, but unfortunately, they're just throwing it at their own goals as well, which isn't ideal, but uh, it just adds that little bit of extra pressure here. Those errors now become so much more oh. critical because both teams having major blunders. They now need to try and minimize that because one more mistake might just see your team go back one game here at the halfway point of the series. But I mean, it's evened up so well because both these teams are now warmed up. I said that there would be a warm-up period on this, particularly being that it is a morning tournament, and um, uh, it's proved to be that way. Well, YVG definitely had an awesome start, but Whale, again, showing that they can lift through the match as well. I mean, that start was not all they've got, and Whale has been the man to pick them up consistently throughout it. What a redirect! That final touch coming off the backboard for that, that's dare I say, actually better mechanics than we've seen out of Arena so far. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's not really a stretch to say at this point. Well, has really done some pretty good stuff in front of the net, and that just proves it again as Arena decides to go for the corner play with 90 seconds remaining here. Marky now going up. Can he oh. dunk it in? No, he can't. Follow through will not work there for Glaive, and he sends it a well too high there. Arena just unable to finish off the play as well here. Overnude and they're starting to get a few too many errors in front of the net here. And it is starting to cost them with Payne now on a bit of a break. He can set it up for his team. Brando unable to get the touch and well in the midfield. Unable to really be in a position to play it through there. So 50 seconds remaining here. Yarrow Valley looking in a very good spot. Glavin though. Looking to set it up for his team, won't be able to hear. Marky picks it back up, but balls immediately contested in the midfield here. Lapine clears it into the attacking third, but he cops a demo. Brando, nice little touch onto the backboard here. Here comes Whale, but he'll miss it this time around. With fairly even momentum on field, less than 30 seconds left. And oh. Oh, one goal in it. This is about as close as it gets, and this is what the series so far has been leading up to. We saw um, YVG take an early lead, OECC lift their game and uh, come back in game two. Now it's evened up and this is kind of a summary of our matches so far, but Brando will take it two up and secure this game with eight seconds left. That takes away all chances for YVG and what a game it has been uh, for OECC, sorry. What a game it's been for YVG. They are, the spuds are just on fire right now. Hot, hot potatoes. They are as time ticks down here. They're really putting their foot down in this series. I'll take a 2-1 lead heading in to the halftime break. And well, for their, for after what's happened in the regular season between these two teams, I'll be more than happy with that result here. Yeah, I mean, absolutely should be. A, this is possibly the best I've ever seen YVG play. I mean, they are pushing themselves to a limit, but they play really well under pressure. And I think that's where they really lifted over OACC this game. Incredibly close match, but when they got on top, they were able to keep it a little better there. They, they really had uh, that pressure advantage over OACC, and they just weren't able to push through that. YVG, a very, very dominant uh, final few moments there. Yeah, it was very dominant for them, especially after, well, what was a pretty uh, interesting own period of our own goals. But YVG will take out the win. Well, if you want to win something as well, everyone in chat, we do have a competition for you to sign up here. Thanks to our wonderful sponsors at the uh, Billy Blue College of Design at Torrance University. Oh, uh, you could pop... Well, well, I'm actually not sure if uh, that competition is actually going on here, so uh, I think I'll, we might just leave that be for the moment. We'll head to a uh, short break here, and we'll be back for the rest of the series after these a few short ads.
And welcome back everyone to the uh, Victorian Rocket League Finals here at Meta, brought to you by our wonderful sponsors at Torrens, Optus, and MSI. I'm Chris, and that's still Gex. And well, we're going to head into the second half of this best of seven series here. And while YVG, they are definitely lif lifting off the canvas here. Uh, they had a strong start, something that we weren't expecting from here, and they've been able to uh, follow it through. And I think that's going to be really key for them in this series as well. I mean, YVG uh, have always had to chase that against uh, OCC uh, and try and catch up. But right now, actually pulling ahead um, might just give them that mental advantage they need. And as we discussed before the break, OCC aren't handling the pressure quite as well as YVG are either. So uh, being on that losing side may just give YVG the advantage they need to take this series out. It is a best of seven though, and they've still got more in this. It's uh, it's going to be an interesting one uh, by any uh, means necessary, I think, here. And I don't think we've seen the last of OECC yet. Yeah, they won't go down without a fight as Marky goes so close, but he can only find the crossbar there. So Newton won't pick up the early goal. This time around, Arena in the corner, just trying to clear out, won't be able to, Lapine gets the ball, Brando just in a bit of a slightly awkward spot, so decides against going for the play here, the ball now reset here, Markey forces it in to the backboard, and that will open up for Arena to go for a play, but Brando merely just steals the ball away from there, Glavin taps it back to Markey, but ball merely contested there into the midfield here as we go past the opening minute both teams still looking for that opening goal but once again over Newton just having a bit of an early advantage with pressure I think uh, another advantage YVG has here that's making up a lot of the mechanical difference between these teams is uh, is the fact that they work so well as a team. Uh, I, I do think that they, as a roster, uh, come together just that little bit more cleanly than OACC do. I mean, both of them have made it all the way to the grand finals and shouldn't be underestimated as teams, but I think where that edges out is in YVG's favour there. So uh, as much as, yeah, coming into this, OACC were probably the favourites uh, from both of us, really. YVG does have some advantages that they are really making the most of and uh, have used them to take a lead here and are continuing to make ground with. No goals yet though, two minutes into this match now and uh, Brando will have to take carry this out on defense again. They have been on defense most of this match so far. OACC having a lot of uh, composure and pressure right now. Um, we will probably, I would assume, see them score first, but it's anybody's game at the moment. Yeah, it, it sort of reminds me a bit of uh, Game 2 here with the amount mm. of pressure OACC have, but Heron Valley, they've been able to get a couple of decent saves in as well so far, but also, something else we need to point out, over Newton, they have uh, had a few too many uh, gr grazes with the uh, woodwork here, which has mm. cost them a fair few times, so that's something they really need to clean up a bit here if they want to uh, have a better chance of winning the series yeah. here as Glaive and goes for it here, backboard play, oh. but there it is again, Marky just unable to finish off the play, that was in for all money and now that will allow counter-attack here, but the double commit will see that ball saved out, but that's exactly what I'm talking about here, they need to take the opportunities when they get it, but when Brando is also saving like that, he's keeping that pressure up in front of the net, it just makes things oh so much harder Lepine. for Robin Uden, as here comes Lapine, he has no issue, he sends it into the net, and Yara Valley will get the first goal in game number four. Yeah, what an incredible shot here, placed so perfectly, Marky just edged forward there, Glavin was coming in as well, just millimetres from that uh, zone that would have allowed him to save, but the rotations weren't quite in time, and that's where the best teams uh, really flourish, they can take advantage of of those tiny, tiny gaps in rotation. There were no mistakes out of OECC there, really. But the uh, just by definition, by the games, uh, the way the game is played, they can take advantage of those small moments that uh, by necessity have to exist in Rocket League. Yeah, and it's so, so crucial to capitalize on them as well. And that's what Yarrow Valley did, as that is a good play from Brando to get demoed, but still taken into the backboard there. I actually thought Wells going to go for it, but he doesn't go for it, but still it relieves a little bit of pressure for YVG as Brando once again gets another good save onto the back wall. Can he do it again? No, he can't. Arena finally breaks through. 
And after oh, so many attempts, heading onto the woodwork, Open Union finally get their first goal of game four. Yeah, and I mean, it was Marky that hit uh, Woodwork just earlier in this match, but Arena has been the one that has been having the most trouble with it, finally breaks through. I think that was probably his first real shot this game, and uh, he made it count. It, it's one for one right now. Uh, Marky one for four could really have had them up in this series uh, if those shots were just uh, placed that slight bit better, but... Uh, it's OECC pushing forward again now, and they have that pressure under their oh. belt. It's an easy shot. Blaven's going to pick up one here for OECC, and both the two um, score makers on OECC actually still sitting below Marky's scoreline, but a great shot there. Yeah, well done there from Blaven, just to uh, force Brando into that pretty much impossible position there. As soon as he was going backwards, to go for the second save, that just opened it up for for OACC to convert, and that was just what they needed to do as well. Oh, oh look at that control, the mechanics once again from this man, it's absolutely huge. Look at the replay here, Brando sets it up well, and then look at that, everyone thinks, oh, he's gonna go high, no, he just gives a nice little tap into the ground, rolls on in at 55 k's an hour, and just like that, the equalizer is there for YVG with 20 seconds remaining here. This is going to be a tight finish to game number four. And if Yarra Valley can get the win here, they will be on state championship points. So it's going to be crucial for them to see if they can pick it up as we go in to the final few seconds. Regulation might not Ooh. be enough here as we enter the extra periods, but no. Ball's going to hit the terra firma, and overtime will be needed here. Our first overtime of the day, and uh, what a well-earned one it is. Um, uh, you, we're having a look at that last goal, Whale really has been the one to meet right. the challenge of uh, mechanics from OECC so far. And uh, But, I mean, we shouldn't be uh, underestimating the pass down there from Brando. That was an incredibly well-placed touch to the corner of the ceiling there. Didn't go to backboard at all where the defense was waiting. Popped off and came out back to Whale and it just ended up being one of the most perfect passes you can make in that situation. Avoided all of the defense and set it up so, so well. Now, they need to do it again though. Lapine's actually going to make a little bit of a back pass here. Whale has confidence in his abilities, but he's demoed away. He did have a chance there. And now Lapine's going to have to pick it up and try and make that back that control. Yep, he's already back up, however, in the backfield, so... No chance it's just yet for over Nuda as Marky forces a double commit, but both Lapine and Brando are able to get the save there. Brando actually able to follow it through as well into the midfield, so just to alleviate some of that pressure here. But Lapine, that could be a bad whip there. Glavin gonna go for the attempt of Brando, who has been absolutely huge in defense, mm. will get yet another save for their whale. Clears it in to the midfield. Brando just can't pick it up there, but Lapine gets a touch so it will see the ball drift into the opposing corner. Well, now looking to try and get control, but Arena, just slightly better mechanics that time around. Will be able to get the touch ball. Now contested in the midfield here. Lapine wins the 50 well, gets it to Whale. It's going to be a slow play off the backboard. Where's his teammate? Brando can't make it past the two man defense there. And Arena is going to try and set it up for Marker here, but he'll carry it wide. That final touch does not work out for him now. As Whale will pick up the ball. He only has a 50 to deal oh. with. It's only Arena, but Arena's there to get the touch. Lapine, can he follow through? No, he can't. Arena gets the ball into the midfield yet again. Brando can't get the save, but Whale will just tap it up into a dangerous spot. Marky sends it wide. Lapine, good slow play there just to clear it out of danger for now. It really does seem to be coming down to this question, Arena versus Whale. There's so many people lifting on this field right now, particularly Brando. I mean, five saves out here. He uh, is almost sol solo responsible for uh, the fact that YVG hasn't gone down before the overtime here. And uh, uh, yeah, really, really, as that third man coming through, we talked about how well these guys fill all positions, but Brando has stepped back into that third man role and now is filling that so, so well. Arena now up against Lapine. Lapine will win that 50-50 and bring it back to the midfield. An opportunity, Glavin's oh. available, just makes the save. Glavin able to just react in time for the save, but 
OACC, they're still under pressure here. Well, we'll get the backboard play. Lupin can't find the touch, however. I'm not sure where Brando is at the moment. He's back getting boost, so that will allow Arena to clear out the ball. Whale now is going to try and push forward, but Glavin gets a crucial demo there, but the ball's being reset, so that won't really mean too much. Lupin getting retribution onto Arena there as Brando now goes up. Glavin steals possession, but an easy pick up there from Whale as we're nearly at the three minute 30 point of OT here. Both teams having some huge opportunities, but some huge defensive work as well from both sides really are uh, keeping everyone in with a shot here to pick up game number four. OACC just have the slight advantage at the moment here. They have slightly more pressure being exerted out, but YVG, when they get out, they can really challenge that line. So yeah, it's pretty much even. Whichever way you look at it here, as we get to four minutes, nearly an extra game of Rocket League has been played in this OT period here as Marky goes up for a play. Just sets up for Arena. That's a nice little pinch off the wall there, but Lapine picks it up easily there. Marky now tries to send the ball. Won't be able to. Glavin can't do too much there in the midfield as Lapine gets it to well. Is oh. that going to be the touch here? Comes Lapine again. The ball's just dribbling in front of the neck. Glavin with a touch there. Well, though, he decides against the play, and with 4 minutes 30 gone, Lapine, he's going to set it up once again, but the oh. ball's really contested. This is looking good for Brando, but he can't find a touch. Well, now, gets it to the third man, sets it up. Where's Lapine? Just can't find it at time. Marina clears it out. I love seeing Brando go for that off the backboard. I mean, he's not the mechanics god for this team by any means, but he made a good effort there and actually a relatively close attempt for how tough that shot would have been. Uh, really, really good to see him going for that sort of thing, especially as we reach a full game of overtime. Now five minutes in Ooh. as we have overtime near seemingly endlessly right now. Defense just holding up so well for both teams as Brando clears out again. Lapine's going to get on top of this as Arena puts it away for Marky. Good passing here, trying to keep that control. Marky's going to get the touch center. Whale will put it over. Lapine now sending it downfield, and it just seems like there's no end to this. It's back and forwards. These teams are so perfectly matched right now, and it's going to come down to who can make the shot and I'm looking at either Whale or Arena these are the men uh, who make the oh. plays and it's Glavin! Glavin steps up takes a second goal and takes the third for the team winning the uh, game and taking them one up again in this series yeah and they just finally are able to force Brando into a bit of a tricky spot there just looking at the replay here from stream, yeah, Glavin, he really only had one option there. He had to send it on that narrow top side. He was able to just do it, and unlike the rest of his team where they've been able to find the post more often than not, he was able to get nothing but net with that goal. He gets two, and uh, yeah, that is that is pretty good stuff. As uh, looks like our party might have just been. Uh, yeah, you'll have to give me a moment. I'm having a few technical issues, just restarting my game um, uh, and my camera uh, <laughs> at the same time. Uh, my computer not happy with me at the moment, but I will be back in shortly. But yeah, what an incredible series out there and uh, evening it up yet again. And it, it absolutely deserves to be as even as it is. Uh, these teams have played so hard that neither of them, and this is what I said, both of them were going to come into this taking it so seriously. Uh, um, they really weren't going to underestimate each other. YVG came in uh, very, very strong in the first game, but after that point, it's been anybody's. Uh, it's really, really been a matter of uh, individual plays so far in this game, bringing out uh, just that little edge to get any goal in this. Uh, it, it's not a matter of uh, of a huge difference in entire teams. It is just those moments that are counting right now. Yeah, and those moments are going uh, can be so crucial, as we've seen time and time again, as uh, your connection to the game's timed out, apparently, for me, so that's never good. But... Uh, just coming we, in now. We will prevent, we'll continue to try and join, so... Hopefully, we won't have much, too much of the action here. Yeah, everyone's back in the lobby, so... That little technical issue aside, we'll be going into game number five here. And this now effectively comes with best of three as well here. Both teams 
trading victories so far. And well, this is going to be crucial to see who wins because we're at the point in the series now that whoever wins, they will pick up or they'll have the or they'll be on a state championship point. So game five is going to be very crucial to see who will have a huge advantage heading into game six as we get this back underway here. It's going to be a nice little start for Lapine, and he will get first blood immediately. Yeah, really early. This is the earliest goal we've seen so far. Uh, Brando passing downfield. Perfect little play and placement as well. Top bins there for Lapine. Uh, great, great goal out there. Uh, I want to just mention the fact that Glavin got the goal in the last, uh, the final goal in the last series as well. He really has been mostly the third man, but in that last um, uh, game, he stepped up multiple times to be the man who had to break through and give that moment. And uh, he did so really, really well. Did indeed, both third man really doing a lot of good work in that last game as Mark. You look at the mechanics, it will lead to a goal under so much pressure. Cool, calm, and collect, and just like that, the equalizer has been scored. Yeah, Marky, great little mechanic there, just that extra touch underneath. It really, really was going to struggle to actually get to that touch, made it perfectly and snuck it under the crossbar. All three members in defense were available, but none could get to it. Yeah, that was just, well, that was all because of Marky, that could perfect control there it was pretty uh pretty good to see from him and yeah there was just really nothing that the defense could do to stop that so first minute in here and we've already got a goal leech here as well just clears it out of danger arenas taps it down to glavin who shoots and he's gonna score as well it seems as though that uh, final goal in the last series was opening the floodgates. There was so much pressure for so long, and I think maybe something broke in these teams because now we've got three goals in no time at all, uh, where we just had no goals for over the length of a full game. Uh, a really, really different uh, showing right now, and I think both Team's probably fairly tired after that last uh, huge overtime and, and all the pressure that would have been on them for that as well. Brando yeah, just Brando missing. goes so close here, follows oh. through from well, and Brando, the sneaky touch just to get the goal again. God, that little touch there. Just look at the replay here. Mm. Just look at that. Keeps in control, able to flip his car around and yeah, gets the equalizer yet again. Yeah, Brando says, don't call me third man, and shows exactly why all of the members of YVG are able to fill all those roles. Uh, Brando stepping up yet again here. Uh, he did end up having to be that main defender for uh, the last game in this series, but stepping up again here, uh, he's now first man almost every time, passes in, and Whale can get a goal off of it. A very, very good pass in here, makes it for a fairly easy shot. Yeah, actually, Arena was the man to make that pass in, unfortunately. And, uh, yeah, Whale just collects it off of that defensive touch. Yeah, Brando doing a lot of good work so far just to set up a lot of these plays. Forces Arena into that pass. And, yeah, as soon as that pass was made, Whale had an open net to work with. And he made sure that he got the goal here as 5 g looked and maybe had another goal in here. It would have been a pretty... Uh, Fast-paced game five here. Five goals already, and we're not even at the two-minute mark. Just got it there. So both teams really starting to put the pressure on after what was a grueling five and a half minutes of overtime. In game number four, Whale puts it in to the corner. I'm surprised he doesn't get demoed there, but he remains for now. Brando in an attempt, but Glavin carries it out of danger there. Lapine... Just having to rotate back as Mark, he looks for an opportunity. Lapine, can he ca control the ball? He cannot. Arena the chance, but that was an easy save there for Whale, actually. He would have thought Brandon would have got the touch there, but anyhow, halfway point now of this game has been achieved. And while well, both teams are throwing everything that they can, but at the moment, Yarrow Valley just have the edge. 
OSCC at the moment, though, seem to have some momentum. A couple of really good setups there, but nobody able to capitalize on it yet. Marky looking for that read, even hesitated back to try and uh, make sure that the touch wasn't a 50. Clavin now will send that upfield. Arena can't get to it, though, as Whale now takes control. A big flick, doesn't get it past the third man. Marky chasing it as that third man as well, really. Uh, great car control in the air there to bring that forward. Glavin actually going to take a long shot, but shouldn't be any issue for Whale. Get yeah, easy save for him there, but Marky follows through! And that pressure from Ovenuna just a bit too much for Yarrow Valley this time around. No one there for the follow-up save, and Marky will get the goal there to bring the equaliser up free all. Yeah, and Brando had only just turned into goal there. He was just a little too far forward, didn't use that um, back post rotation quite perfectly enough. Uh, ended up pretty dead centre of the goal, and uh, really the ball just not being in front of him was all that cost him being able to save that. Whale, a great little touch on that read there, uh, puts uh, YVG in uh, some contest for a goal here, but Arena, look at those mechanics coming off the backboard. A lot Ooh. of risk here. That commit, though, Really not what you want to see. Glaven now as third man will make the save. Yeah, that was a crucial save to get as well. If if I even lost another goal there, I think that could have been Kernis for them in game number five as Whale now looks for an opportunity to get the ball to the pin here. This is gonna look very good. He's a slow play, but Brando can't make it in time. Arena powers through to clear out the ball. Whale is able to bump Glaven off the play there, and he's even able to get that little Sneaky second touch as well. Puts the ball back into the midfield here where Arena has to go for a back pass here. Brando unable to intercept and that's going to open it up for Marky. Can he convert? No, he can't. Sends it too high there. And that could have been it for Open Unit. That could have been the opportunity they needed as Lapine clears it out. Brando can't follow it through here. And now Well back in defense. We'll get an easy pick up there. He should just be careful of Arena here, but he gets a pass to one. Can't get a pass to Glavin as well. Arena, little touch there, jumps forward, but can't get to the ball in time now. Well, looking for an opportunity off the backboard here. Brando is there to keep the pressure rolling, but Arena finds the ball. Brando keeps him in the attacking third at the very least, but Marky pops the ball out of danger here. Time ticks down in regulation. One last chance for any of the team to get a buzzer beat arena gets it to marky but that will be set wide can't find a second touch and back to back overtimes is required here hmm but is it going to be back to back full game length overtimes oh god <laughs> <laughs> uh it doesn't seem like it i mean this is oh my Ooh. goodness what a save from whale but a shot from arena that angle was insane i'm almost disappointed they didn't get that just because of what clip that would have been but an insane save to make it uh, not one as well. Great little back pass there to Marky, actually. Uh, intelligent play. Unfortunately, Brando and Lapine turn on that very, very quickly and uh, not going to be able to make anything of it. And uh, Brando now going to be able to contest that, but Arena gets it in front of the goals. Didn't have enough to work with to make the angle there, and it's going to come back to the blue side now, OACC under fire again, a good centre from Whale, but nobody there as Arena brings it forward, Brando challenging, a big bump on Glavin will uh, uh, set up an opportunity for a centre, Brando nearly takes it himself, Whale coming in now, but Glavin puts it away to safety, an intelligent touch here, and the, exactly what OACC needs uh, to keep alive in this. Brando makes a miss here, could be crucial, especially if Marky can get control here. like that. Whale's there, oh. Brando's there, the double commit could cost them. It's going to come back out, and it looks like the danger has been adverted for now. They needed that double commit, there was no other way mm. they were going to get the save, but Luckily for them, Odin was just in a position where they couldn't capitalize on it. So, works out well for Yarrow Valley as we're already past 90 seconds in this OT. A double demo there for Yarrow Valley to work with. But the ball's just not in position for him to go for an all-out attack here. They're back on defense already here. Brand of a touch. Marky follows through, but he sends that one wide of the mark there. Lapine now carries the ball well. Gets a demo, but he doesn't get the touch on the ball that he... Truly wants Marky under test possession, loses it to Whale. Arena of the mechanics sets it up for Marky, dunks it in. No, he can't. Crossbar again for Marky. Will see him not get the goal. Well carries it through on the counter, but Arena's already there. Lapine, good steal, but sends it wide of the mark. 
Brando looking for something in front of the backboard here. Won't be able to. Wow, though, keeps the pressure going here. Slow touch goes to Lapine, who shoots and scores! Yarra Valley on state championship point, heading into game six. Yeah, what a huge effort from YVG. We really did come in with OACC probably as the favourites here, and yet here we are with YVG on the match point for the entire championship here for the season. And uh, Whale, of course, heading up the team right now with not only the goals to back him up, the mechanics to back him up, but now the saves as well. Six saves coming out of that an insane effort and uh wow what a game out of yvg the amount of uh overtime we've now had is uh insane and it just goes to show how much pressure um these teams are capable of dealing with and how even this series is yeah at this point we're pretty much into game seven if we add all the overtimes up so mm. yeah this is uh this has been a thrilling series so far. The past over times have all but confirmed that, but now YVG only one away from victory here. Uh, with how close these games continue to go, you just don't know how this next game's going to go. Both teams just continue to repel each other, and it just gets so, so tense. So, it's... Quite literally anyone's game heading into game number six. Can OACC force us into a decider? Or YVG finally get back-to-back -back wins and end the series now? And now it is coming forward from Lapine as Glavin gets a defensive touch. Goes south, though, as Marky has to actually make a save there. Now Arena and Glavin, the double commit actually does pinch out. I think it was planned, but doesn't go far enough as Marky gets control again. Brings it to the wall, gets it past the third man, but Whale rotates back. It's dead center, nobody's there. Arena misses the opportunity. Yeah, ball just dribbles in front of the net, and Marky once again just just can't get the poor ball into the net. He's really uh Having some unfortunate times in front of it here. He's doing well in the mid here, but those final touches just costing him, unfortunately, and that might just prove to be the difference as YVG now back onto the attack here. Well, just immediately goes to the attempt. Arena already there for the save. Lapine follows through. The finish is back, and he gets another goal. Yeah, uh, Lapine, uh, he was just called in the chat a minute ago, the finisher. Really spikes that well, actually. Uh, makes sure it's in a safe spot for it to continue forward, and uh, as a result, absolutely no chance of saving that. Uh, it, it, he has been uh, quite on top of making those important touches for finishing off these plays, and uh, Whale now trying to set him up again, but not actually forward enough. Both Lapina and Brando very far back on field. Content with their one goal lead, maybe for the moment. Lapine is in front, gets some bumping on Glavin, who actually puts it across his own goal front uh, for a moment there. That goal line looking fairly dangerous as uh, YVG continues to maintain control, and they've been doing so fairly well. It is very back and forth uh, across this, but for large periods of time, um, uh, you're seeing both sides maintain this control and it is an asset to both teams to be able to do this but something has to break at some point and so far it's only been YVG able to do this uh, that this match and that is really what they want here they can take it home what a shot almost in from Brando Whale gets one as well but it's into Glavin who will make the save yeah that was a crucial save Brando should have got that goal, but the crossbar denying him this time around as Marky sets it up for Arena, leads it to Marky, and Marky just can't find it in! Denied by the cross or the sidebar this time around, and well now onto the counter attack. Can he get the goal? No, he can't. Glavin clears the ball out as we get to the halfway point of this game. 
Overnoon are getting so many opportunities here, but they just can't convert. How that could have nearly been a bump that led to a goal here. But well, we'll continue to forward through. Brando just not in a position to immediately capitalize on a slightly scattered defense there. And Glavin eventually clears it out straight to Lapine. But an important tap up there. Not sure by who. Just to deny a second goal here. What VG putting on so much pressure, but they just can't find a goal at the moment. Yeah, it's really, really massive pressure, like you said, and it's still not let up yet as Brando has to come in a great touch down to Whale as uh, Whale takes control of this, has the mechanics and has the boost for the moment, runs out eventually, and uh, Marky takes control at that point, bringing it back upfield arena now. Shooting, is it on target? No, it's well wide. Whale, a big pinch out to that midfield. They're definitely worried about these shots coming on, but they can't let up themselves. They cannot rest on a one goal lead despite uh, the clock ticking down here. A minute 20 left on a clock. A minute 20, 80 seconds remaining here for OACC to bring it back and force us into a game seven. Glavin trying his best to find something, but at the moment, it will be YVG still with that lead, still with a lot of the opportunities as well as Brando sets it up for Arena, who sends oh. it wide as well. Marky falls through. Is that going to go high? Yes, it is. Glavin third man unable to convert. And once again, Ovenuda knows so close, but the fourth man of the post continue yeah. to be so clutch there for YVG. As we enter the dying moment of this sixth game here, Well decides to reset the play. Marky, it will steal the ball away. We'll drift across the face of the net as we're now into the final 30 seconds here. Marky will be uh, interrupted in his play there. Well, trying desperately to clear it out. Glaver, one, two, no, how do you do there? Sends it high as well as Lupine. Carries it out of danger. Only 10 more seconds for ACC to try and get an equalizer. Can they do it? It's not looking too good for him here. Will our first seeds fall in six games? It looks very likely. Into zero seconds. The ball hits the ground. No, it doesn't. It's still in the air, but eventually Brando will see the ball hit terra firma. And Yarra Valley, they will be evictors here in Victoria. They take out the series over over Newton, 4-2. And in game six, it is all over and it came down really. And I don't want to be uh, hammering on this, but it did come down to those same mistakes that we saw earlier. It was the, it was the woodwork that really cost OACC uh, this championship in the end. YVG just able to be that little bit more consistent to perform under the pressure of finals. An incredible series out of them. And I mean, uh, really, I'm... I've been impressed by every member of the team at different moments. I mean, they all filled their roles so well, all able to, um, all really able to lift their own game at every point on the field. And uh, it, it, that's what brought it home for them. The, the ability to adapt as individuals to every play uh, and to bring that home despite the pressure that they were under. Yeah, and especially in those home few games, uh, Ovenuton really had a lot of that pressure as well. YVG just able to uh, really repel most of that uh, threat, especially with uh, a lot of the uh, saves. Uh, we actually saw all the team really uh, help out. I mean, in the early part of that series, Brandon was the main uh, saver there, but as we progressed through, we saw especially Whale, but also Lupine as well, start to pick up their efforts in the uh, defensive third. And, well, it really showed at the end as, well, a lot. Of, I'm pretty sure all of them got into at least 15 saves throughout the series. So, yeah, it's a mm. pretty good effort from them all around. It also makes it hard for us to make an MVP call as well. So... Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, I think we, there's one name that we called out more than any, and uh, it, 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 you're right, though, it is really hard to pick. And it would have been hard to pick no matter um, who came out on top here. I mean, OACC uh, had a really even players on their team as well, um, uh, but I think there was really only one major standout here, and it was uh, the two players that really were competing for that t shot title. Would you agree, Chris? Yeah, indeed, yeah. Uh, I've, look, 
if this game ended in about four or five, I probably would have said Brando would have been the uh, MVP. But Wale mm. really lifted, especially in the back end in those in the second half of that series. And mm. yeah, uh, just because of that, he just nudges out his teammates. So for me, and- well, MVP, yeah. Yeah, and on defense as well. I mean, we saw how proficient he was with mechanics uh, coming up uh, against the best here, really, uh, in OACC uh, and equaling them on every footing for for um, mechanics there. We saw that he had the ability to score and to set up. It wasn't until the end there that we saw that he also really had the ability to defend. I mean, incredible uh, effort in defense there with six saves on board um, uh, in one of his final um, matches and um, really, really enormous effort out of him on every point on the field, as there was out of every um, player on the team. But I do think that it was those shots uh, early that really brought him to everybody, to the front of everybody's mind, the the ability to go up uh, against... uh, the likes of uh, some of the best mechanical players in the area arena, um, really, really massive. And Whale was able to uh, not just step up to that mark, but even conquer arena on multiple occasions. He didn't have the problem with the backboard that arena had. And um, that brought the game home for them uh, largely. And uh, yeah, really, really massive, massive effort out of Whale as it was for, from the rest of the team. I think he just barely edges that out for the MVP here. Yeah, it was Pretty marginal, if I do say so myself. But yeah, well, just the star performer in a sea of stars, really. So yeah, that is well. That's also very good for them heading into nationals. Obviously, we have a couple of teams already in. Uh, we'll decide our final team as well a little bit later on at two p.m. AEST with the WA finals. And uh, yeah, that should be a good series as well. Uh, I'm not too sure what we're going to be doing here for now, though. Uh, do we have an interview? Okay. That's that's the yeah. One we're hoping for an interview here, but uh, yeah. if we we will be going for at least a short break before an interview. Um, if there isn't one, we will see you at two p.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time because we have more finals to continue with. Uh, Western Australia will be next. We've just had the confirmation there will be an interview, so don't go anywhere. Uh, we will be speaking to some of the boys there from uh, YVG.
And welcome back, everyone, to the uh, post-show, I suppose, of the uh, Meta HSC Rocket League Finals in Victoria. I'm Chris, that's Gex, and uh, we're now joined by, uh, well, one of the uh, victors of that series from the Yellow Valley Grammar Spuds. We're being joined by Brando. Uh, Brando, congratulations on your victory. Uh, how are you feeling after what was a pretty thrilling series for us as spectators? Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, Honestly, I'm, I'm still shaking. Like, that... That was a big series. That was the biggest series I've ever played, definitely. Um, honestly, shout out to basically all everyone in the team, plus the subs, because we um we basically came into this week actually playing the game. Like since we played through the uh the off like the normal season, we kinda we didn't play that much and we kinda just went through it, but we actually all stepped up and uh made sure we can play our parts. Yeah, coming in warm is definitely very important, uh, especially when it came to uh, handling pressure, which I think you, it was one of the reasons that you really took out the win here. Um, uh, this has to be surely one of the most high-pressure situations you've been in, if not the most high-pressure um, uh, situation you've been in, in terms of Rocket League. Um, uh, did the massive amount of overtime contribute to that? Um. Yes, yes, definitely. Um. We, I don't know how, but we... We stayed very stable the whole the whole time. Well, usually we break down sometimes every now and then, but we actually played very well. I'm I'm extremely happy with everyone, especially Lapine. He he stepped up tremendously. Like geez, that was that was a show. He put on a show. Yeah, and uh, that's something else as well. Uh, it definitely does seem like, especially Lapine, but everyone in the team did improve throughout the series season. I mean. Obviously, comparing you guys to the, your regular season lost mm. against OACC, uh, you guys have really improved. So, uh, how does it feel just being able to improve like that and, well, put a, well, pretty much defeat the best team heading into the uh, finals just compared, just on the uh, regular season rankings? Well, yeah, it's it kind of you just kind of feel accomplished because putting in all the all the effort to actually play the game, get get better, and you get to reap the rewards, I guess, after mm. beating them. Uh, so, uh, I, I want to ask uh, that that first game. I mean, a, a lot of people expected OACC to come in stronger than you. You said you've put in a lot of time recently, and I would uh, assume that that has a lot to do with that first game result. How much do you think mentally uh, winning that first game by two by two goals uh, had over the rest of the series? Did that give you like a really good start into it? Well, obviously, it boosted our morale a, a lot, and um, we got to we got to go into the next every other game with more confidence just knowing that we can beat them mm -hmm. and um actually before we actually we played while we were warming up we went to some threes and we versed them in oh. we basically scrimmed against them 10 minutes before the game oh. and we won that one so we were also pretty confident going into there so uh i'm pretty happy with how that went yeah i suppose that uh there was some some worries on oacc side uh where being realistically down by two games uh, at the end of the first game there. Uh, an incredible series, uh, nonetheless. Uh, it, um, what, what did you think of the opponents uh, um, themselves? Uh, do you have anything to say to them? They're scary. They're, <laughs> they're very scary. As soon as they get in the air, especially marking arena, we, we needed to learn to instantly trap them down because if they have time in the air, they're scoring. There's no other, nothing else to it. They're scoring most of the time. Yeah, speaking about scoring, uh, I think the chat's asking this one. Uh, we need to talk about that uh, own goal that occurred oh. in the halfway of the series. Uh, what happened? Oh, of course, of course. No, basically, it's it's a bit of a joke between our team that I, I have to score an own goal nearly every important series, yeah. and I scored two this series, surprisingly. <laughs> and each time, it's it's just been devastating. I, I don't know what happens. It ball goes somewhere and it hits my car and it goes in. That's that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I th I think I saw in chat uh, people discussing after that point, though, that uh, you had earned the uh, brand retribution, something like that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, uh, I oh, think no. uh, very much the people watching, uh, they they while they did pay attention to the own goal, uh, you, you earned that title back, Brando. Uh, uh, <laughs> you, you, you did lift, uh, particularly in, uh, in attack as well. Uh, uh, for a while there, you were looking very much like a third man. Would you say that that's where you sit in the team or, or do you guys feel that you're as well rounded out as, as my impression is of your team? Oh, well, honestly, I think we all just play every part because um, 
honestly, we all we all held our own in each each mm. like end of the field. Like we all we all had our moments each side. But yeah, I might have played a bit more defensively this game, and then Will might have played more defensively the next. But I think it all came together in the end. Definitely did. Now, uh, just one more question before we uh, let you go. I want to ask you how you're feeling heading into the nationals now, because compared to so- some of the other regions, uh, it looks like Victoria might have a pretty decent shot of uh, taking out the uh, title overall this year. Yeah, I- I'm pumped. I-, I can't wait to show everyone else uh, versus everyone else in the region mm. and uh, get back into the games. Yeah, it's-, it's a fun experience. I love it. So I can't wait. Yeah, well, uh, keep up your keep up your efforts in uh, out, outside of the season itself as well. It definitely showed that you guys had been practicing uh, uh, coming in today. So yeah, uh, thanks for coming in for the interview. I uh, really really enjoyed talking to you. Uh, uh, congratulations to you and the rest of the team, and uh, and of course Whale uh, for earning that MVP uh, award as well. Um, yeah, really good to talk to you, man. Thank you. All right, see you guys later. Thanks, Brando. And that was our Brando from the Victorious Yarra Valley Grammar Spud. So, yeah, that was good to hear from him. And, well, I'll tell you what, Victoria definitely did have a good chance in Nationals compared to, mm. well, seeing how everyone else is at the moment. But uh, the other one thing I do want to point out as well is that I'm pretty sure we also have New Zealand joining us here. And they are. And whenever New Zealand send a team to uh, high school Nationals in esports, they are always particularly strong. So mm. that should be a very interesting series when that occurs. But... Anyways, for us now, that's where we are going to leave things here for Victoria. We'll be back in about two and three quarter hours time for the WA finals to wrap up all of the finals in uh, here in Australia. But until then, thanks very much to our sponsors at Torrent, Optus and MSI. And if you are into gaming and esports, then make sure you do or make sure you head over to the Torrent page to learn more about their game design, game programming, 3D design and animation and graphics and communications design courses. We also do have a uh, little competition going around here. You might be able to win a chance to uh, get an online session with a professional league player or a streamer from League of Esports. So if you're a Why Not fan, for example, you can sign up and maybe get a session with him. Maybe he can help you with some things in a league. But yeah, the uh, link's now in the uh, chat. So sign up over there. And that is where we are going to leave you today. So my thanks to our producer. Thanks to all the players. Thanks to you all for watching. And thanks to Gex as well. I've been Chris. Thank you so much once again. And until 2pm AEST, bye for now.